Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video we'll see how to create Excel macros in Google Sheets. And more specifically we're going to compare the two spreadsheet applications side by side in regards to automation and the creation of macros. They use a different programming language altogether. As you probably already know by now, Microsoft Excel uses Visual Basic for applications. On the other hand, Google Sheets uses Google Apps Script. I have Microsoft Excel on the left and Google Sheets on the right. The programming environment or the IDE, Integrated Development Environment, to create macros in Excel is the Visual Basic Editor. We can access the Visual Basic Editor through the Developer tab, Visual Basic, or pressing Alt F11. If you don't have the Developer tab yet, go and check the first video in the Tutorial for Beginners to see how to add it and to know more about it. And this is the Visual Basic Editor. Unless you're completely new to this channel, you should already be familiar with this, because we are using this in every video to create the macros. On the other hand, the programming environment to create macros in Google Sheets is the Apps Script Editor. We can access the Apps Script Editor through the tab Extensions here, and as you see there are Add-ons, Macros, and Apps Script. If we click Apps Script, it opens the Apps Script Editor, where we can create macros for Google Sheets. There are some differences, but there are also many similarities between the two. For example, in the Visual Basic Editor, we have the VBA project on the left as folders or modules that contain the code. We can add a standard module here, and then we have the code window on the right. Similarly, the Google Apps Script Editor shows the navigation on the left and the code on the right. By default, we see the code.js file, and that's actually an equivalent to the standard module in VVA. We can add additional files either as a script or an HTML file. And this one is used, for example, to create forms in Google Sheets or also to create entire independent web applications. Here we can also add libraries and services. Now, on the right-hand side, we get by default the function my function. And if you're familiar with JavaScript, you see that this is basically the same syntax. This is actually the equivalent to the procedures that we have in VVA. That would be something like my function in VVA. So that's a sub procedure. But in VVA, we also have functions procedure. In Google Apps Script, that's the same. To not confuse you too much, let's just write here my macro my macro. Now both programming languages are object-based and we've seen a lot of that already in Excel VVA. So for example if we want to get the name of the active sheet in Excel we would write something like active sheet dot name. If we want to get the name of the active sheet in Google Sheets we would write something like a spreadsheet app, and that's actually the equivalent to the application object in Excel. Then when we add the dot, we get the possible methods, functions, and here we have the get active sheet. And then we get the name. As you see, it's very similar to the code in VVA. The only difference is that we didn't refer the application here, but we can actually write application active sheet name, and that would be exactly the same. Spreadsheet app is the application, get active sheet is active sheet, get name is the name. Now we can display that in a message box or we can put it in a variable. Let's say sh name equals application active sheet dot name. And again, we don't need to refer to the application in Excel, so we can leave it as ActiveSheet.name. Now, in the same way, we can add this to a variable, also SHName. We can do it like this, or we can add var, as we usually do in JavaScript. It works in both ways. Now, if we want to see what's the value of the variable during the macro execution or while testing, we have several options in Excel, but one of the options would be to use the back print, sh name, 
and this would show the value of the variable in the immediate window. We can access the immediate window through view immediate window. Now if I run this macro, we get the value of that variable, the name of the sheet in the immediate window. The equivalent in Google Sheets is the execution lock. As you see, it's highlighted here. And we can print or write to the execution log with logger.log and, and the name of the variable. So if we save and run the macro, oh, the first time we run the macro, we need to review the permissions and actually authorize and allow to execute the macro. That's only the first time. And as you see, we get here in the execution log the name of the active sheet. We can also display the value of the variable in a message box. So to do that in Excel, we use the function msg box sh name. And we didn't declare the variable here. In that case, Excel will assign the type variant, but we can declare it as each name as a string variable. With the back print and we message with the back print and we show a message box. If we play the macro now, we get the message sheet one, which is the name of the of the active sheet. We can do the same in Google Sheets with a spread sheet app dot get user interface dot alert and the variable, in this case sh name, which is the name of the active sheet. And if you're familiar with JavaScript, you see we are using the same function here, alert, to display an alert or a message in the in the window. And we've used before logger log, which is the equivalent to the console log that we use in JavaScript to write to the console that we can easily access in a browser through F12. So if we save and run the macro now, as you see, we're going to get back in the spreadsheet an alert with the name of the active sheet, which is sheet one, of course. Now, we've been running the macros from the play button, the execute, the execute or run macro button here as part of the debug tools in VBA, and the equivalent run or execute the code play button here next to the debug option in Google Apps script. But as you probably know, there are many other ways to run a macro in Excel. And I'm going to leave you this video up here with 10 different ways to run a macro in Excel. Now, we also have several options to run a macro in Google Sheets. So if we go back to the Google spreadsheet, we can also run the macro from extensions, macros, but we usually need to import the macro first. So if we click import macro, we see here my macro, that's the function that we were coding in the app script editor. Then we need to add the function. And once added, we can always run the macro here from macros. Here it is. And that's the same we do in Excel under view, macros, to run a macro, right? Another very useful alternative is to add a button to run the macro. In the same way, we've been doing that in Excel many times. So for that, we need to go to insert the drawing. And we can add a shape, 
a text box or an image. Let's add a shape. And right here, run the macro. And then if we right click and click on the three dots here, we can assign a script. And this will be the same script that we've used, and that was my macro. And that's case sensitive, so if you write a capital M here, it won't work. You click OK, and now when we click the button or the shape, it runs the macro. Now, in Excel, we need to save the file as a macro enable to keep the VBA project and the code. We do not need to save with any special extension in Google Sheets. We just change the name here and it's saved automatically. Now, it's important to highlight that running a macro in Google Sheets is slower than running a macro in the desktop Excel application. So depending on the type of work you're doing, you may want to use Excel or Google Sheets. Google Sheets will give you some other possibilities in regards to integration with other Google APIs and web resources. And you can also use Google Apps Script to create independent web applications. If you're interested about that, please write it in the comments and I will consider to add more videos about it. So this was an introduction to creating Excel macros in Google Sheets and a comparison between the two programming environments and programming languages. I hope you found this valuable and thanks for watching.